In the introduction to this unit of our MOOC on Geographic Information Systems, we started with what may be the first known case of systematic georeferencing of data carried out by John Snow in the mid-1800s in London's Soho. And John Snow can certainly be considered to be a trailblazer for Giz, applying an approach and, importantly, a thinking that would really start to come into its own a hundred years later, in the middle of the 20th century. The term geographic information system can be dated and attributed precisely to the English geographer Roger F. Tomlinson. He, in 1963, was working at Sparts and Air Services in Ottawa, Canada, where he initiated and developed what became the Canada Geographic Information System, CGIS. As a vast country with immense natural resources and environmental treasures, Canada was among the first to recognise the need for a nationwide land inventory and management system that would be capable of quickly and efficiently handling large amounts of data. But the person we want to introduce to you in this short historical portrait is a man called Jack Dangerman. Jack Dangerman was born to Dutch parents in Redlands, California in 1945 and, while studying for a second master's degree in landscape architecture in the 1960s, Jack was working at Harvard's lab for computer graphics and spatial analysis, which had started developing map-making software. And in 1969, aged 24, together with his wife Laura, who had also been working at the same lab, Jack founded what they called the Environmental Systems Research Institute, ESRI, back in Redlands. This started out as a land-use consultancy firm, but it quickly turned itself into a driving force in what Tomlinson had only recently given the name Giz to. The couple used their combined skill set. Laura was a social scientist who oversaw operations. Jack now became a pioneer in digital mapping and the development of computer tools used for map making digitizing maps and spatial analysis, to establish themselves in pole position for a whole new market that was now opening up. And by 1982, pretty much ahead of everyone else, they were able to launch Arc Info, the first commercial GIS software, which became the forerunner for their Arc GIS suite of software products designed to cater for a wide range of clients across the corporate, statutory, non-profit and educational sectors. Today, ESRI, having dropped its full name to be known solely by its erstwhile acronym, and claiming a substantial 43% share of the global GIZ software market, can rightfully call itself market leader. Coining the phrase, the science of where, to describe what they do, the Dangermans today still privately own their company, which is still headquartered in Redlands, although it now employs roughly 4,000 people worldwide, turning over in excess of a billion US dollars a year. The Dangermans are now, as we record this in 2023, in their late 70s, and they are estimated to have accumulated a personal wealth of close to 9 billion US dollars, although they are correspondingly munificent in their philanthropy. They've established the Jack and Laura Dangerment Preserve, which is a nature reserve about three hours drive up the coast from their hometown in the district of Santa Barbara, California, and they've signed the Giving Pledge which is a public promise made by extremely rich people to use their wealth for good causes. Their pledge letters, which is published online, offers some insight into the motivation behind their work and perhaps also a bit into their ethos. Quote, Our vision was to improve the world by creating and providing technology that would help organisations better understand our environment 
and make better decisions. Today, our business has become the leader in mapping and geographic information system software. Our tools are used by hundreds of thousands of organizations that apply mapping and geographic thinking to almost every field of human activity. Our sense is this is making an enormous difference in issues ranging from climate change and natural resource management to urban and regional planning, transportation, security and human health. And that is something Giz has certainly done ever since Jon Snow first traipsed around Soho, counting fatalities from cholera and plotting them on his paper map just over a hundred years before the Dangermans started their own remarkably successful enterprise.